I am going to tell about SAP BODS interview questions and answers. Let's start. All the best. Questions number one, what is the use of business objects data services? So, business objects data services provides a graphical interface that allows you to easily create jobs that extract data from heterogeneous sources, transform that data to meet the business requirements of your organization, and load the data into a single location. Questions number two, define data services components. So, data services includes the following standard components. Designer. Repository. Job server. Engines. Access server. Adapters. Real-time services. Questions number three, what are the steps included in data integration process? So, stage data in an operational data store, data warehouse, or data mart. Update staged data in batch or real-time modes. Create a single environment for developing, testing, and deploying the entire data integration platform. Manage a single metadata repository to capture the relationships between different extraction and access methods and provide integrated lineage and impact analysis. Questions number four, define the terms job, workflow, and data flow. So, a job is the smallest unit of work that you can schedule independently for execution. A workflow defines the decision-making process for executing data flows. Data flows extract, transform, and load data. Everything having to do with data, including reading sources, transforming data, and loading targets, occurs inside a data flow. Questions number five, how many types of data stores are present in data services? So. 3. Database data stores provide a simple way to import metadata directly from an RDBMS. Application data stores let users easily import metadata from most enterprise resource planning ERP, systems. Adapter data stores can provide access to an application's data and metadata or just metadata. Questions number 6. What are memory data stores? So. Data services also allows you to create a database data store using memory as the database type. Memory data stores are designed to enhance processing performance of data flows executing in real-time jobs. Questions number seven, what are file formats? So, a file format is a set of properties describing the structure of a flat file, ASCII. File formats describe the metadata structure. File format objects can describe files in delimited format, characters such as commas or tabs separate each field. Fixed width format, the column width is specified by the user. SAP ERP and R slash 3 format. Questions number 8, what is repository? List the types of repositories. So. The data services repository is a set of tables that holds user-created and predefined system objects, source and target metadata, and transformation roles. There are three types of repositories. A local repository. A central repository. A profiler repository. Questions number nine, what is the difference between a repository and a data store? So. A repository is a set of tables that hold system objects, source and target metadata, and transformation roles. A data store is an actual connection to a database that holds data. Questions number 10, what is the difference between a parameter and a variable? So, a parameter is an expression that passes a piece of information to a workflow, data flow, or custom function when it is called in a job. A variable is a symbolic placeholder for values. Questions number 11, when would you use a global variable instead of a local variable? So, when the variable will need to be used multiple times within a job. When you want to reduce the development time required for passing values between job components. When you need to create a dependency between job level, global variable name and job components. Questions number 12, what are adapters? So, adapters are additional Java-based programs that can be installed on the job server to provide connectivity to other systems such as Salesforce.com or the Java messaging queue. 
There is also a software development kit, SDK, to allow customers to create adapters for custom applications. Questions number 13 list the data integrator transforms. So, data underscore transfer, date underscore generation, effective underscore date, history underscore preserving, key underscore generation, map underscore CDC underscore operation, pivot reverse pivot, table underscore comparison, XML underscore pipeline. Questions number 14 list the data quality transforms. So, global underscore address underscore cleanse, data underscore cleanse, match, associate, country underscore ID, USA underscore regulatory underscore address underscore cleanse. Questions number 15 what are cleansing packages? So, these are packages that enhance the ability of data cleanse to accurately process various forms of global data by including language-specific reference data and parsing rules. Questions number 16, what is data cleanse? So, the data cleanse transform identifies and isolates specific parts of mixed data and standardizes your data based on information stored in the parsing dictionary, business rules defined in the rule file, and expressions defined in the pattern file. Questions number 17, what is the difference between dictionary and directory? So, directories provide information on addresses from postal authorities. Dictionary files are used to identify, parse, and standardize data such as names, titles, and firm data. Questions number 18, what is the use of array fetch size? So, Array fetch size indicates the number of rows retrieved in a single request to a source database. The default value is 1000. Higher numbers reduce requests, lowering network traffic, and possibly improve performance. The maximum value is 5000. Questions number 19, what is the use of case transform? So, Use the case transform to simplify branch logic in data flows by consolidating case or decision-making logic into one transform. The transform allows you to split a data set into smaller sets based on logical branches. Questions number 20, what is the difference between OLTP and a data warehouse? So, Index's OLTP system has only few indexes, while in an OLAP system, there are many indexes for performance optimization. Joins in an OLTP system, large number of joins and data is normalized however in an OLAP system there are less joins and denormalized. Aggregation in an OLTP system data is not aggregated while in an OLAP database more aggregations are used. Questions number 21, what is SAP Data Services? So, SAP BO Data Services is an ETL tool used for data integration, data quality, data profiling and data processing and allows you to integrate, transform trusted data to data warehouse system for analytical reporting. BO Data Services consists of a UI development interface, metadata repository, data connectivity to source and target system and management console for scheduling of jobs. Questions number 22, you want to set up a new repository in BODS. How do you create it? So. To create BODS repository, you need a database installed. You can use SQL Server, Oracle Database, MySQL, SAP HANA, Sybase, etc. You have to create below users in database while installing BODS and to create repositories. These users are required to log in to different servers, CMS Server, Audit Server. To create a new repository, you have to log in to Repository Manager. Questions number 23, how do you manage object versions and BODs? So, central repository is used to control the version management of the objects and is used for multi-use development. Central repository stores all the versions of an application object so it allows you to move to previous versions. Questions number 24, what are the common transformations that are available in data services? So, data integration. Data quality. Platform. Merge. Query. Text data processing. Questions number 25. What is the use of query transformation? 
So, this is most common transformation used in data services, and you can perform below functions. Data filtering from sources. Joining data from multiple sources. Perform functions and transformations on data. Column mapping from input to output schemas. Assigning primary keys. Questions, number 26, what is an embedded data flow? So, embedded data flow is known as data flows, which are called from another data flow in the design. The embedded data flow can contain multiple number of source and targets, but only one input or output pass data to main data flow. Questions, number 27, what are the different types of embedded data flow? So, one input embedded data flow is added at the end of data flow. One output embedded data flow is added at the beginning of a data flow. No input or output replicate an existing data flow. Questions number 28, what is a transformation in data services? So, transforms are used to manipulate data sets as inputs and creating one or multiple outputs. There are various transforms that can be used in data services. Questions, number 29, what is the use of conditionals? So, you can also add conditionals to workflow. This allows you to implement if slash else slash then logic on the workflows. Questions number 30, give an example of workflow in production. So, there is a fact table that you want to update and you have created a data flow with the transformation. Now, if you want to move the data from source system, you have to check last modification for fact table so that you extract only rows that has been added after last update. In order to achieve this, you have to create one script which determines last update date and then pass this as input parameter to data flow. Thanks for watching. We are here to boost your career.